Welcome to TransLogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. How does the LAPD handle a shooting suspect who's barricaded himself inside his own house? Or what about if a bomb went off and there's other explosive devices in the area? Or a train wreck where they have to rip off the sides to extract the survivors? Introducing the Bat Cat. All right, so here we are with Rich from the LAPD Bomb Squad. Rich, thanks for being with us. Absolutely. Tell me about the Bat Cat. It's a um, commercial grade forklift that we could either use manually or completely remote. Look, Ma, no hands. And what does Bat Cat stand for? Bat Cat was an acronym that I came up with, and it stands for Bomb Assessment Tactical Counter Assault Tool. All right, so other than just looking really cool, what is it used for? Uh, it was primarily designed for bomb squad applications, anything that we do not want to send a bomb technician, a human operator downrange. Uh, we want to do it remotely. We're going remote control style right now. I'm in the Batcat. Someone else is controlling it. All right, so we're actually turning right now, but the steering wheel isn't moving. That's something I didn't know uh, how it would go. Obviously, this is a very large vehicle. Uh, the turning radius seems pretty nice. We're on kind of a helipad area here, this concrete. The wheels are, are surprisingly uh, nimble. They're foam filled. They're not filled with air, so uh, the ride is obviously quite stiff. So I'm, I'm living my all-time dream of sitting inside a remote control car while someone else is driving it. So tell me some of the specs of the Batcat. Well, the, the Batcat, the, the actual platform, the Caterpillar platform, that's uh, rated about 12,000 pounds lift. It can extend out about 52 feet, but we have other attachments to make it even longer. Talk me through some of the scenarios that the Batcat's actually been involved in. I know Silmar was a really big one. It's been used about seven times in the two and a half years it's been deployed. It's been used in Silmar for a barricaded suspect who shot a police officer, basically to breach the house. You just ripped down part of the house. I mean, well, we did is breach the house sounds nice, but you <laughs> ripped it down. We, we created openings. OK. Because uh, Call it this, what you was, will. this was an active shooter. They kept shooting at us. You already shot a police officer twice. That officer survived back in the field today, but there was no other way to get into the house. Mm. It, it may look huge and uh, it may look like it's very powerful, which it is, but Batcat is actually designed to be very methodical and very precise. All right, so obviously the LAPD is getting the job done with this Batcat. Autonomous vehicles mixing with department vehicles makes a lot of sense. You're able to do what you need to do and save officers' lives, and we like that. All right, so we're here with Eric from ASI. Eric, thanks for being with us. You're welcome. Uh, what does ASI do? We take existing vehicles and convert them to robotic vehicles. So what kind of vehicles do you guys automate? You know, we've automated everything from golf carts to 400-ton mining trucks, and then we've also built our own range of small robots. And we're here because uh, you guys helped create the Batcat. Tell me a little bit about the process. Rich from the bomb squad here in LA contacted us. They wanted to take a vehicle that they already had and they wanted to convert it so they could run it remote control. The whole idea was we want to be able to keep people out of harm's way. So you guys were integral in the process of the Batcat. Are there any other departments across the country who are using this? There aren't yet. This is the first one out there. Is that the future of, of Bomb Squad and police departments across the country? Uh, pretty much. Uh, you'll see a lot of agencies that uh, almost every Bomb Squad has some kind of robot. Uh, some kind of robotic platform, a lot of SWAT tactical agencies, you know, is used a, a tremendous amount in the military. In today's day and age, uh, we try to do as much as possible robotically. Yeah. Uh, we can always replace this robot. We can always replace this bad cat. You know, you can't put a price on a human life. You uh, have to trailer it. 
to get to where it's going, right? So Correct. the process is phone call comes in, load it up on the trailer, drive this huge semi truck to the location, pull off the bat cat and go to work. Yes, and that's exactly how it's done. Uh, whether it's 24 seven, it, we get a call. Uh, there's, there's a cadre of certain officers that are uh, certified to operate it. There's certain uh, officers that are certified to drive it. Uh, it's not an easy thing to drive. It's very, very heavy. But when we roll up on scene, it's because they need us. What seems to be the problem, officer? Oh, nothing. We're just going to lift up your car and shove it over here. Excellent. It's cool to see that autonomous vehicles aren't just for the freeway. This thing is mean looking, it's getting the job done, and it's saving officers' lives. So listen up, all you bad guys. This bat cat's coming for you. For Translogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. See you next time.